So let's do a real world problem on how to identify the bank customers who are going to leave the bank or left the bank. The problem is bank customer churn model. The learning objective of this is that we see how to do data encoding, a feature scaling, handling imbalanced data. So you will find in most of the cases like this where it is related to a default or finding a disease or churning where we will find there is an imbalance in sample in terms of label so we have two category or binary class where the customers who did not left the bank and the customer who left the bank so we'll always find that the customer who left the bank are few in number so this type of data set is called as the imbalanced data set the same way in disease prediction we find there are few number of people who are having a disease healthy people count are more again imbalanced data so how to handle or do a machine learning problem with imbalanced data using random undersampling technique and random oversampling technique we will use in this case support vector machine classifier and also see how to go for hyperparameter tuning to find the most appropriate model so we begin with importing the four basic libraries pandas numpy matplotlib and seaborn later on we will import the libraries for pre processing or train test plate or grid search or support vector machine in the due course so import the data set the url of the data set is given in the description box so you can just copy paste the url and read the csv file as data frame so we will begin with the analysis of data our data set has 13 columns so it has customer id which is unique surname of the customer credit score geography gender age tenure the balance number of products purchased in the bank credit card is active member or not estimated salary and churn so this churn is our y or label or a target variable so this is what we want to predict we go with df.info this gives that this data set has 10000 rows with 13 columns the column geography is a categorical variable or is an object we need to treat it the gender is again a categorical variable so we will look how to deal with that so as can we make customer id as our index so let's try so first we will check whether is there any duplicate customer id in our data set so out of these 10000 rows is there any duplicate customer id so we use the function df.duplicate on our customer id column so it will give us the result in terms of boolean true and false we add up all true because true is equal to 1 so we find there is no true value uh, given by this function uh, dot duplicate so we can say that our column customer id don't have any duplicate or it is a unique key so we set this customer id as a index by using the function dot set underscore index again run dot info so you'll find that what has changed so instead of your row index from 0 to 4 times 9 it is now a customer id with in last uh, 4602 to 8319 all other so the columns now are not 13 those become 12 rest all things remain same so we begin with look for the different categorical variables and if required we would like to change them or encode them because we cannot use a object or a string or a text in our machine learning models so we start with first one our geography so we use the function dot value underscore counts on column geography of our data frame so we found there are three unique values france germany spain with their unique row numbers or count so we encode them so with the use of a function df dot replace and providing as a dictionary so geography 
is our column name and then we want to encode the France a key with value 2, Germany a key with value 1, Spain a key with value 0. And why this in place equal to true? Because we want to change the encoded value 2 for France, 1 for Germany and 0 for Spain in our original data frame df. So that's why we are using argument in place equal to true. Now let's go to we use dot value under score counts on gender and we found male are 5457 and female are 4543. So this time we would like to encode male as 0 and female as 1 using function dot replace so df dot replace gender column with male key as 0 female as 1 and again in place equal to true so all male will be written as 0 all female in our gender column will be written as 1 now go to another categorical variable number of products so we found that number of products in our original data frame or df is a integer but it is a categorical variable so the customers who have used or have one number of product of the bank are 5084 2 4590 and 3 266 and 460 so you will find that the number of customers who are using product 3 or 4 are very few in number if we encode them as separately so we will see or we will find that for our model to learn there the data set is not enough or sample size is not enough for product 3 and number of products 4. So what we will do? So we will club the categories. So again using the function dot replace on our data frame the column name number of products we would like to change the customers having or use number of product equal to 1 as 0 the number of products 2 as 1 number of product using as 3 is also as 1 so what we are doing actually we are clubbing the categories 2 3 4 as 1 category equal to so that we will not be dealing with issue with small representation or small sample size of number of products 3 and 4 now move to credit card so this is an integer but a categorical variable we found that the number of categories are though imbalanced but substantial so almost 70 percent or 7000 people have credit card and 30 percent or 2945 don't have credit card now we move to active member categorical variable to check the value counts so the here it's almost same or almost 50 percent the people who are active is representing 51 percent in our data set the customers who are not active in the bank are 48 percent or 4849 out of 10,000. now in this step we would like to do some feature engineering so here we would like to find out number of customers who have zero bank balance in their bank so we think that the customers who are keeping zero bank balance may have higher chance of churning or closing or going out of the bank so we use the function dot lock and we want to extract the rows where our balance okay balance is a integer in our data frame so balance is equal to zero and we only interested to extract the churn column so these are the customers who have zero bank balance in our data set so the customers 500 customers who have zero bank balance have left the bank and 3000 customers who have zero bank balance is still in the bank so substantial amount of customers have left who have zero bank balance so we'll create a new column for our data frame named as zero bank balance so we are using the np.bear function to create a new column zero balance and giving it a number or category one and zero so here 
with the plot we will find that there are the people who have a zero balance and the people who don't have a zero balance in their bank account now we want to use a group by function on our churn and geography so we would like to say that the churn or no churn based upon the geography the three countries what is the different counts of people are there so this will give us a table we are using group by function we can find out the count of people for churn or no churn based upon geography so in this way you can create more group by functions to check the hypothesis or explore the data frame on your own now move to the modeling part so to create a model first we need to extract our feature or define our features or attributes or independent variable and to define our dependent variable or y or a label or a target so we drop surname and churn so surname has no predictive power it just a name so we are dropping a surname and churn which is our label or y variable from the data frame using the function dot drop x is equal to 1 because the surname and churn are the label of column and x is equal to 1 is a column axis and defining our x and y we are defining as a churn so the shape of our x and y are 10,000 rows and for x 11 columns are there now in the beginning i talked about handling imbalanced data so the problem like fraud deduction spam that there are very few emails who are spam the number of routine or regular emails are much larger than your spam emails disease the people suffering from disease is always small than the people healthy online sales churn the people who are leaving are less than the people who are buying similarly advertising clicks where the people or the count of people who are clicking on advertisement are few than the people who are not clicking on advertisement you, you are finding that the category or the label of our two classes are imbalanced so how to deal in such a situation so either you can run the model with whatever data you have but it will not give you a good accuracy because your model will not be able to learn from the category which is few in number so to overcome this undersampling or imbalanced data we deal with two strategy which are undersampling and oversampling let me explain them to you so undersampling means what so we bring so we have a two classes are there or binary class right orange and blue so orange is say for example the persons or the people who have disease orange is a category the males who are spam orange are the categories like the people who left the bank the people who default on a loan the people who fraud so these are always small in number and the blue are the other category so we reduce our sample size in undersampling strategy so that the count of orange and blue become same so we are reducing the overall sample by keeping the count of our sample equal to each category whereas in oversampling we will regenerate randomly the data of under sample category to match the other category so let's see or apply all this strategy use the raw data as it is use the strategy of undersampling and use the strategy of oversampling so let's count so while counting our churn we found that the people who have not left or churn are around 8000 the people who have left or churn are 2000 overall sample size of our data set is 10000 rows now let's go with the undersampling so there is a function random under sampler so we import this function random under sampler from library under sampling of library in balance learn then fit resample and we will find that after the fitting right so we have under sampled okay so after the under sampling what we have find that now 
our overall sample size is 4000 initially so let me explain initially our data set shape is 10000 rows right after rus means random under sample after doing the under sampling we have 4000 rows so we lost 6000 rows or information why because our category which has least sample are say 2k close to 2k 2037 so we drop the rows from the larger category to match the numbers of the lesser category so now in our random under sample label or target variable you will find the count of categories or the sample in each category are same they are now 2037 in each case so this is the strategy of under sampling so this is the bigger one this is the smaller one so we are making both equal to the smaller one so this is 2073 so now after this both become 2073 so this is a under sampling strategy after plotting it is same now use the another strategy which is random over sampling so in random over sampling initially our x and y has 10000 rows as before but now with over sampling we have data equal to 1526 almost 16000 so how come the data set become bigger than the initial data set from 10000 to 16000 because of random over sampler what it has done so we have a category which is larger in number another is smaller in number we are making it bigger to match the larger category right so see that initially we have 7000 or near to 8000 larger category samples so we'll make 2037 to match 8000 by creating a random sample so in our y variable after applying the function random over sample we found that the category 0 has 7963 as before but category 1 or the people who left the sample also matching the bigger category now both have around 8000 so that's why the sample size has grown in random over sample the benefit of random over sample is that we are not losing any information which is available in our initial data set because in under sample we are reducing the overall size of information or data set from 10,000 to fewer but here we are increasing and also solving the issue of imbalance now after this we have three data set with us the raw data set which is our original we have a random under sample data set and we have a random over sample data set now we want to run the support vector machine algorithm on all these three data set and compare the accuracy that which strategy works better so we train test split each data set so we are using the function train test split from sklearn library we are splitting all these three data set just refer if it is only x train or x test y train y test it is the original if it is with a fix like rus or ros it belongs to random under sample and random over sample respectively now our credit score age tenure balance salary they have a different scale so we need to pre-process our data with standard scalar or by standardizing our data set so we use standard scalar on our split data set it is a best practice to split the data set first and then use standard scalar or min max scalar so we separately apply standard scalar function on train data set and test data set so we this is the code so sc dot fit underscore transform we want to transform the column credit score age tenure balance and estimate salary of our x underscore train sample 
and we would like to save these five columns in x underscore train. So we are basically overwriting the x underscore train these columns after transformation using standard scalar function. The same we will do with x underscore test and similarly we will go ahead with our random under sample train data set and test data set and random over sample train data set and test data set. So we have splitted our data and now we have also standardized the data. Hereafter we will apply the support vector classifier. So we import the function SVC from SQLN and here we are applying or fit or training our model with train data set and after that training we are predicting the y predicting using x underscore test. So these steps fitting and prediction we have done with raw. So this is a your raw or original data set. The same way we will do with our under sample and over sample. So check for model accuracy with our raw data set. So we find this is the confusion matrix and the overall accuracy is 84. Now please note 84 percent of overall accuracy seems very good but in classification there are issue. Our category of interest is to find out the people who are leaving the bank, the people who are churning the bank. Here if we see that the recall is just 26 percent. Though overall accuracy is very high, the recall of the category of interest is just 26 or 0 0.26. So you will see that our model is not good in predicting the churning though it is overall able to predict good. Why? Because of imbalanced data. The people who are not leaving are in great amount. So even if say for example as a thumb rule, I start predicting everyone belong to zero category, even then my model may have accuracy in the range of 70%. If just by blindfolded, I start tagging everyone as not leaving, not leaving, not leaving, even in that case my model will be giving 70% accuracy. But it, this model is not for what we aspire or we are creating a model. We are creating a model to predict the people who are leaving the bank. And to predict that class, this model is performing very badly. So let's try hyperparameter tuning on the raw data or raw model itself to see whether there is some improvement possible without treating for imbalance. So for support vector machine, Right. So we use C, three values of C, 0.1, 1 and 10, gamma also three values, kernel we are using RBF and class weights as balance. Now we fit our model using grid search CV and find out the best estimator or best model. So we find that the best support vector model in our raw data set has C equal to 10, class weight to be balanced and gamma equal to 1. So we apply this function for prediction and find out the accuracy. Now you see that the overall accuracy has come down from 84 to 80. But still I see this model is better than the previous one. Why? Because now at least it is better in predicting the people who are churning or leaving the bank. Previously it is 26.26. Now it is 0.41. Better than previous but still it's not a good model. Now we apply a support vector machine on random under sampling data set. So we run the step dot fit and we predicted. So this is dot fit on our train data set and predicting on our test data set. We stored the y predicted value then compare them for model accuracy by creating a confusion matrix and classification report. So after fitting under sample or random under sample data, we find that the overall accuracy is 73, lower than the previous two, 84, 80. But the class of interest, the one, the people who are living ba bank, the accuracy are higher, much higher. Recall is also 71 and precision is 73. So this model is much better than the previous or the raw data under sample. Now use a grid search to 
uh, tune the model further. So using grid search CV, we have run the model. The best model has C equal to one class weight balanced. We have chosen for all and gamma equal to 0.1. Then again, this model with this C, a weight and gamma we have predicted. So this is our predicted value. Now we are comparing Y test with the new predicted value using this model with C equal to one weight balance and gamma 0.1. And we find these are the accuracy. So this accuracy is there is not much increase in accuracy in random under sample with or without hyperparameter tuning. It is almost same, almost same. There is no significant difference we can say random oversampling. So oversampling is one where we are not losing any information in our original data set. We are oversampling the class which is underrepresented. In this case, we have around 16,000 of rows or information. So we fit our model on train of random oversample, Y train of random oversample and we predicted using X test random oversample. Now check the accuracy. We find the accuracy without hyperparameter tuning is almost same as RUS. So we can say random under sample with or without hyperparameter tuning and ROS default model has almost same accuracy but much higher than the raw data model but much higher than the raw data model. Okay, now try model tuning or hyperparameter tuning for random over sample. So we have kept same grid or option 0 0.1, 110, gamma 1, 0 0.1, 0 0.01, kernel RBF and class weight balanced as before, then run here. So we find that the overall accuracy is the highest and also the recall is 97%, much, much higher. So we we'll find that this model, our tuned model of ROS is beating or performing better than any other model of raw or random under sample. So this is one of the highest accuracy we are getting not only because of using a random over sample but also using standardization, reprocessing, proper encoding of our data and adopting the good hyperparameter for tuning. So the accuracy is 92 and the precision and recall for the people who are leaving is also very very high. So this is how you have to look for maximizing the accuracy or the performance of your model in any case. It's not always that we jump from one model to other model. The solution is in proper pre-processing proper data manipulation, creating a feature engineering and so on. Now to further increase or test on your own, you can try with random forest classifier or the other classifiers like logistic regression or nave base or KNN, whatever you want to do. But always remember that in real world, it is the data pre-processing which always take a lead or front hand before we actually do the modeling part. So in a very nutshell, in a comparison to show you all the results. So initially we got 84% accuracy, but our recall for the people who are churning is just 0.26. Then we hyperparametered or tune this model. The accuracy has dropped from 84 to 80, but recall has increased from 0.26 to 0.41. Then we have used the random under sample. Here the accuracy in both the cases with tuning or without tuning is around 73 or 74%. And also there is not much difference in the precision and recall of category one, which is around 73, 71% in both the cases. But for random over sample, the overall accuracy for tuned model is highest 92 percent and also the precision and recall is highest. So just try with the codes and in case of any doubt or query you can write in the comment box or you can join our live 
doubt clearing sessions to clarify your doubts and to learn more you can join our free internships or free certificate programs by visiting our website and creating your lifetime sign up in our learning management system thank you